guys after subscribing to this channel please make sure that you also press the bell icon so that no notification no new video of mine any educational video is missed by anybody guys and uh, today we're going to start with uh, lectures on uh, anatomy see uh, a lot of you have uh, taken my complete course package and uh, uh, there are certain topics uh, in the uh, guidance section where I've written just study from the basic books. And I've also mentioned the name of the basic books which in which these topics have been properly given. But nevertheless, many of you still wanted me to take lectures. Uh, uh, these uh, demands I've been getting from the last year. So I did what was, uh, you know, uh, important in the as priority list would go, you know, complete this answer bank, finish over the practical course. And now since I have this time to, uh, you know, kind of... Uh, listen to your uh, uh, requests. I'm now starting with those uh, topics which you found found uh, easier if I would have taken, uh, you know, a proper class on it, which is why now I'm starting with the anatomy series. So in anatomy series, uh, uh, we'll be starting right from the basics. So I'll be telling you everything right from external genitalia to the internal genitalia. And then of course, I'll take it up from there. So only those questions which are asked in the exams, they'll be given proper due attention and those questions which can be asked further in the exams will also be given importance to. And after I finish off with these uh, lecture series, I'll make sure that we just, you know, practice quickly the, the questions which have been asked. Of course, they are there in the answer bank, properly given. But uh, nevertheless, I'll give you a, an idea as to, you know, how to go about answering, what all to be written and what all has to be missed. Okay, and how to answer properly when such a question is asked in your DNB theory exam, right? Let's let's begin. So uh, this is a case, yes, uh, this thing, anatomy series going on. And uh, I will be talking about not just anatomy. See, when you were an undergraduate student, what you did was to understand the anatomy, to understand how it works. But when you become a postgraduate student, what's important is the applied anatomy. If I made you study the anatomy, what was the reason? Okay, so how do you apply it in your day to day activities? This is what we're going to kind of uh, stress on. Let's begin. So I've taken these slides so that's, uh, you know, kind of easier for us to understand and go ahead over here. Okay, now I'll talk about right from vulva. Okay, let's let's consider the right from the vulva. I'll just give you a, a brief, uh, you know, this uh, look of the external genitalia. This is how it looks. I'll just uh, blow up a little this image. Yeah, so if you can see, just mark clearly, this is the mons pubis. Okay, this is over here is your, uh, you know, is the clitoris and this is the prepus. Just, just around it is the prepus. This is the frenulum, as you can see. And over here, these actually are the labia minora. When I was taking the, uh, recently the vaginal hysterectomy class along with pelvic floor repair, I told you that the labia, the two labia should be kind of fused in the midline. Only then you would see that it's a, it's not a lax vaginal wall. And your end point of putting the two Alice forceps to make for reconstruction of a pelvic floor repair becomes the end point of the labia minora. So this is how it looks. So this is the labia minora. It's got no hair on it. And over here, this fleshy part is actually the labia majora, which is in continuation with the mons pubis. And it's got hair over it. And this is the posterior vaginal wall. See, this is very basic. Obviously, you are now, you know, postgraduate students. Of course, I expect you to know all these things. So let's go back to understanding and going back to what we were studying before. Uh, let's go back to our first slide. So uh, quickly then, uh, this is a rounded, hairy, subcutaneous, fatty mass right over the sub, uh, symphysis pubis. That's your mons pubis. Going over to the labia majora, like I said, there are two, seven into two into one. Nobody's going to ask you that. But just, you know, to impress the examiner, you can write it down. There's no problem in that. Fibro fatty folds of skin, each side covered with stratified squamous epithelium very important why is it important is because this is where you know the vulva we call it vulva you know and this is where your vulval cancer starts so this is an important part and a homologous to the scrotum again important part so labia majora they are homologous to the male scrotum they fuse over the mons pubis anteriorly and extend to merge into the Perineum posteriorly joining medially to form the posterior commissure. In children and nulliparous women, they usually lie close up apposition, whereas in multiparous women, they usually gape widely. And they, you know, because of the childbirth trauma and stuff. So, labia majora, they can, they are usually, you know, kind of uh, gaping widely. But in uh, nulliparous women, in case of children, they are close together. 
The outer aspect of labia are pigmented and covered with hair, while the inner surface is smooth and contains sebaceous glands. They are richly supplied with blood vessels, lymphatics, and nerves. Okay. You got to know this. These basic important things. Okay. Now, these notes have also been made by a basic book. Okay. So there's nothing added extra from my side. Then you come to labia minora. I just spoke about it. That there are two delicate folds of skin. They lack hair follicles. And they're about uh, 5 centimeters long and 0.5 to 1 centimeters thick. And obviously, labia majora is for what is found, forming their outer boundary. And very important over here on either side of the pudendal cleft. Now, if I ask you the question, what is pudendal cleft? All you need to know is that is actually, you know, the, uh, you know, the gap between. See, what exactly is enclosed between the labia minora is, uh, you know, the vestibule. What is enclosed inside a labia majora, we call it pudendal cleft. So, on either side of the pudendal cleft. They are moist, they are devoid of fat, they are reddish, resembling mucous membrane, often projecting. So these things, you know, you can easily write in the examination. So I'm just kind of hurrying through them because then I'll give more time to those things which are volatile, which you'll not be able to remember easily. For example, the blood supply, lymphatic supply of all these structures, which was recently asked. I have made a video on this as well. Uh, if you go and see, uh, click on that video, which is uh, telling you about uh, the recently asked question in uh, December, I'm sorry, June 22. Uh, which was, or, I'm sorry, maybe December or June 22, but it was just asked, uh, you know, last year. A question was asked on the blood supply of the genital organs. Okay, so that includes, what do you mean by genital? That includes everything. That means I'm talking about the external genitalia and I'm talking about the internal genitalia. So reproductive organs, if they say, then I'm talking about vulva, vagina, cervix, uh, uterus and fallopian tubes and ovary. Still, it's too much. Okay, to remember. And if they're talking about gen genital organs, then I'm mostly talking about vulva, I'm talking about labia majora, minora, stuff like that. Okay, going ahead. Uh, so, what I was telling you is that they're moist, they're devoid of fat, reddish, resembling the mucous membrane almost, often projecting beyond the labia uh, majora in multiparous women. Anteriorly, they split to enclose the clitoris. Obviously, you know that. And in, uh, inferiorly, they fuse in the midline forming the fauchet, which was I was trying to emphasize upon you when we were taking the pelvic floor repair class, that they should join in the midline. Area between fauchet and vaginal orifice is called as fossa navicularis. They contain connective tissues, rectile muscle fibers and are richly supplied with sebaceous glands, blood vessels and nerves. So we'll be talking about that as well. Clitoris is the main erectile structure located anteriorly in the vulva, being homologous to the penis, which is very important. It's a question which is asked in, uh, you know, many comparative exams. If you, even if you start uh, sit for your uh, NEAT SS, this is going to be a question uh, like the question which was asked, uh, which I just spotted out be uh, before. That Levi majora, they are homologous to the scrotum in the uh, males, and uh, this uh, clitoris, well, you all know, it's uh, homologous to the uh, penis and in the males. It's two centimeters in length and is composed of highly sensitive glands, corpus and crura. So everything is there. Even frenulum is there, prepus is there. Now what is vestibule? I just spoke with you. It's an almond shaped triangular area enclosed by labia minora. Again, very important. Laterally and extends from clitoris to the foreshed. What is foreshed? Where the two labia minora, they join. Let me just show you. Let's... Uh, increase this uh, size and now I'll try to explain to you. This part, okay, this part is the foreshed where the two fuse and this part, this entire area, this is called as the vestibule and this part a little wider, you know, a little above, this is called as the pudendal cleft. The area which is inside the labia majora is the pudendal cleft and this part which is inside the labia minora, it's called as the vestibule. That's as simple as that, okay. All right. Now comes important thing. Uh, sorry. Okay. All this is also left. So I spoke about vestibule and the important thing about vestibule is that it's a functionally mature female structure of the urogenital sinus of the embryo. In mature state, there are usually four openings into the vestibule. Well, obviously, you know them. One is urethra, the vagina and what else? Two Bartholin ducts. Okay, so this is again very important. Now, talking about urethral meatus, well, well, you know it's just nothing but the opening of the urinary bladder or the urethra into the vestibule. Then there are 
something called a skinny gland. All that you should remember about skinny glands is that they are paraurethral glands. Paraurethral glands very important for at the time of uh, you know uh, uh, coital activity, you're good for lubrication. Again, now let's study. They are homologous to the prostate gland in man. Again, very important. Can can be as a need assessed. Um, homologous to the prostate gland in male and situated on either side of distal urethra. So they are paraurethral gland. Again, an important exam question. And if I were your examiner, and if you fumble on these things, I will not forgive you. Is why, why I'm you know stressing the importance of this. See, at the level of postgraduate you know, uh, you know, uh, student, there are certain things which you cannot afford to do wrong. What I'm taking the class on actually is one of those things which you cannot fumble. You cannot do anything wrong about it. Now, suppose in case if you're unfortunate enough, you get an exam case on uh, anything like, you know, uh, vulval carcinoma, Bartholin cyst or any problem in the, you know, genital area or a case of STD or whatever. You know, everything which you do not know will be asked to you. You know, the blood supply, the lymphatic drainage, the, the uh, you know, embryology, everything which you're not expecting to, uh, to be asked in your examination will be asked. And that time you'll remember these uh, lectures, you'll remember these sayings when, when people were trying to hammer inside you these concepts. Just remember that once. It will not uh, vanish from your mind once you've taken it seriously. So, they are paraurethral uh, ducts or paraurethral para gland, often infected with gonorrhea. Paraurethral ducts, kidneys ducts, they usually open into the posterior wall of the urethra, inside the meatus, but can occasionally open into the vestibule on either side of urethra and they are, they, these glands are responsible for <coughs> a lubrication during sexual activity. Then comes, of course, vagina, vaginal orifices, median slit. Behind urethral opening in most virgin women, the vaginal opening is usually hidden by the overlapping labia minora and completely, incompletely guarded by the hymen, obviously posteriorly. It gets dilated during coitus and during childbirth. Hymen is a septum of the mucous membrane. This is important because by the time you people will actually come in the market, hymenoplasty will become a very, uh, it is still is a very, uh, you know, in vogue thing. Uh, cosmetic gynecology is already taking its... Uh, strong foothold not so much up till now in Indian society but someday it will be very soon so you should know a little bit about hymen and what exactly are the regions and uh, importance so it's a septum of mucous membrane which usually gets ruptured during first coital act or during any strenuous, any strenuous activity hymen gets badly torn at parturition to form uh, you know different size uh, cicatrized nodules which is called as carinculae myritiforms I hope you had heard this term before or they call as hymenal tags. Okay, so they get badly torn. Uh, <clears throat> then we talk about Bartholin's gland. Again, this is an applied anatomy class, right? So with everything that I'm speaking, I'm telling you it's applied anatomy. Are you getting that or not in this lecture by now?